Hello fellow guppy enthusiasts and aquatic fish keepers. Uh, today I'm making a video on my automatic water chain system. This video has probably been the most requested video that I have had since I started doing this informational series on guppies. And it's easy to uh, determine why because I think the number one time consuming thing that uh, a lot of us do in our fish and on our aquariums is water changes. Um, it's very important to the health of our fish, it's very important to maximizing the growth of our fish, um, but it also takes a lot of time and uh, with busy lifestyles it can be hard to, to get enough water changes done uh, on your fish. So. It became very, very vital to any fish room, but the very, very vital and probably the most important aspect of my fish room uh, is my automatic water change system, because without it, I uh, don't know if I'd be able to be in this hobby very much. Uh, certainly not with uh, as many tanks that I currently have. Um, I have built, been a part of building four different fish rooms. I've seen different styles and ways of building automatic water chain systems. I've talked to other individuals who have done similar uh, similar things in their own systems and I've kind of come up with one that uh, when building this fish room that I thought was very cost effective overall uh, but yet fully automatic and very versatile. Uh, there would be some, a few little changes I'd make to it and some I kind of seen coming as I was doing it, but it was a little bit of a um, financial aspect I had to take into account when I did certain things. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have done and give you the ideal um, setup, or at least what I feel is ideal setup and way of doing things. So with that said, I'm going to get you all off the tripod here, and we will break into it. Now, before we even get to how I'm getting the water in or out of my tanks, it's important to know the, the process that it goes through before it gets there. Currently, I haven't, I'm on well water. I don't have chlorine. I don't have chlorine, chloramines, or anything like that coming into my water. My water coming out of the tap is coming in around 7-0. So I don't really have to worry about adjusting my water. So there was no need in this fish room for me to have a barrel set up or anything like that to pre-age my water or treat it to, to bring it up to some condition. So I'm able to come right out of my tap into my different uh, you know, processing and then right to my tanks. Uh, I don't really have to age my water. But with that said, one thing you do got to think about is temperature that is in your room and then the ideal temperature for the water going into your tanks. And ideally, it should be about the same temperature or a little warmer than what um, your tank temperature is. And with that, I'm using what's called a wax valve. It's a temperature control valve. You set it to whatever temperature you want. Uh, there's an inline coming in from your tap from the hot water side, one from the cold water side, and then you set the temperature and what comes out the outside is a pre-temperature controlled valve uh, or, or level, whatever you have it set at. Uh, for me, uh, my setup's kind of hard to see down here on the ground, <laughs> near the ground, but my wax valve is right there. And as you can see, there's different settings. Uh, I come out of my, um, my uh, tap from there, and I got these flexible lines going in. Now, for me, I had to bump up with my well, I had to bump up my well of water pressure a little bit to get enough uh, to run uh, my system in as many outlets as I'm running. So mine goes ahead and it comes up to this pressure pump. Um, and it only turns on, it turns on, I got it set for automatic. 
so as it feels the difference of the need for water draw the water starts to draw my pump will turn on and this pump can run add up to 38 psi which is important 30 s 38 psi pounds per square inch to your water pressure whatever the in is coming in so from there it comes out my outside there's a check valve to make sure nothing goes back and then it goes all the way up to basically I have a splitter to go to different zones or different things I'm doing and then each zone you can come on down and I have it going to um, these which are rain point these are irrigation controllers this particular one's a smart controller I can control this from my phone I can set up different times and durations for it to go off this is a two zone controller and by pushing either side I can also manually run this system or I can use my phone to manually run it but I have it set up for automatic uh, currently mine goes off uh, for a couple hour period I believe it is uh, I'm gonna be bringing it down to about a one hour period five days a week because now I've gotten my pressure up to where it needs to be and then from there I come out with garden hoses and these garden hoses are what I'm using to do the full length over to each rack of mine so with that we'll go ahead and we'll come on up and it comes on in and it mine comes all the way up to here and then I reduce down to a uh, quarter inch push connect now if I was to do this again I would go up to three eighths inch push connect fittings just to get a little bit more building of pressure but I knew this might have become a little bit of a problem for me um, but it was a financial thing at the time uh, you do not want to go to your local hardware store and try to put, pick up push connect fittings Push connect fittings at your local hardware store are going to cost $5 a piece where you can get 8 to 10 of the same fittings on Amazon for that price. So you definitely want to, if you're going to go with the push connect, which is a cheap way of going with the way that I did it and used Amazon, you want to use that Amazon to get your cheaper price. The great thing about push connect fittings is anybody can do them you get me there's a little cut tool for about six bucks you could cut this tubing really cheap you can get it in big rolls and then you just push it in and it locks and then some of them like this one has these clips um, that clip on so mine runs through to each tank and I can run about 30 um, outlets per zone if you will with the quarter inch if i was with the 3 8 inch i don't i think i could get even more but the the lovely thing about the way i did it this time is i am using drip irrigation heads okay and you can buy these from a half a gallon an hour all the way up to i believe eight gallons per hour um and if you have let's just say a tank of younger fish you're going to want a little bit more water change on them where some people have a problem with changing too much water on older fish can hurt their uh, break down their caudals a little bit too much well if that's the case these easily pop out when you push up on this and it'll release it and then you could push it pull pop this out and you can have different ones of these uh, for different with different amounts of water that'll come out on the same line and I always get the pressure regulating drip emitters because as you go down the line your pressure is going to reduce some and these will compensate to it so it equally puts out in every tank as long as you have a reasonable amount of pressure it's able to the system set up is able is able to equally pressurize themselves to give a very equal amount towards each tank uh, assuming you're obviously you're having equal amounts going in with the pro with the size drip emitters so I am using drip emitters the system turns on this starts squirting out for drain 
I have drilled all my tanks. That is what I had decided to do. Um, I had went, these are from Gemco. I went with this type that I can move up and down so I can adjust my water level in each tank. And then they have this screen on it that unless the fry is baby, baby, baby size, I don't think they're getting through there. Even then, it's pretty hard. Um, and then I had used for this particular rack, and I don't think I would do this again. It works, but it's you can have some issues like you can see here with kinking. So it's not going to drain quite as well as it should, or I would hope. Uh, so I'm having to bring my water level down a little bit on these. Um, but I, this is just um, flexible tubing um, that's all pushed in together going down to, I believe this is a two and a half inch uh, PVC drain. And then that goes right out um, to wastewater. That's what I had done here. Now, in my new rack that I got over here, each one's going to be drained. I, I have got to drain these down and actually add the uh, the um, the bulkheads on them. But behind each one of these tanks, I have a PVC, three-quarter inch PVC in the center. And now I'm going to have three-quarter inch PVC to riser coming up to here. And then, as you see, these come down in an L shape. If you took this this flexible tube off I'd be down here it's an L shape well this end can sit right down into that three quarter inch PVC that's coming up from the T on the new rack so these will just set down onto to about right here where I'll have the PVC cut the three quarter inch PVC so they'll just set in and then they'll just drip out and go down the PVC this way you don't have to worry about any type of kinking Eventually, I will end up replacing um, and probably pulling off all of this flexible tubing. Um, but you don't have to worry about any kinking. Um, pulling on these, you don't have to worry about cracking your tanks because you're not going to be pulling on them constantly to move them out, in or out. You don't have to have great access. For these, I have to add, I had to leave myself extra in the rack and I had to have pretty good access to these. Uh, they're a little bit more of a pain where these, I can just kind of pick the tank up on an angle and set it back down and I don't have to have access to where it's draining. So I can have this long run and no good access and just by once this was drained, pushing down on the tank, that'll bring the back of that tank up, pull it out of the PVC and I'm able to remove the tank. That is my drain system and these go down to again two and a half inch drain that goes out over there. Um, so once again, um, I will try to put these stuff in the description. Uh, I'm using a wax valve as my temperature control valve, hoping to get a temperature that's about equal to the or slightly warmer than what you have in your tanks. I personally had to go up from there to a pressure um, pump to bring the water pressure up. Then I go to these rain points. They have several different um, manufacturers make different ones you may not care to have one that's smart I wanted one that was smart that I can access with my phone this is a rain point irrigation controller and then from there you come out with hoses and I work right into and that carries on to where my tanks are uh, it's just so that way you all can see there's also a way you could set it up without e controller and you can just have something set up like this and you could just push it down this one's gonna get put on a on a system uh, automatic controller here this week um, but then they'll go ahead and it'll come out and as you can see it just squirts water in to the top of the tank and then this has got straight in these I did a little different because I had these from another project uh, these are straight in uh, out um, bulkheads and then it'll just say as the water level rises it overflows and goes out so instead of making this video any longer that is my automatic water chain system. I hope that helps uh, some of you and gives you an idea on how to do it. I think it's a very more uh, economical way of doing things. Uh, it's very effective and it's something that if you're not the best a plumber, 
um, or know too much about that. It's something that you can quickly uh, pick up on. The only thing, like I said, I'd probably go up if you're doing a lot of tanks. I would definitely bump up to that 3 8 inch push connect size uh, and go from there. So until the next video, happy fish keeping.